Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. I know we're only one day into looking at the federal budget and seeing what we have to cut. You know, I told you yesterday it's going to be hard work and you're going to lose friends because you're not going to be popular because you're going to say, hey, we all, we all have to sacrifice here. But none of that's going to happen. It's not necessary because I just saw the cover of the Newsweek magazine and gosh darn it. I mean, happy days are here again. Look at this. America's back. The remarkable tale of our economic turnaround. You can read about that and hate on the right. Wow. They've got it all done. So there's really nothing else we need to do here. I think um, we just go home. Go ahead and turn out the lights. And it's... <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. We can... Come on, guys. We can go now. America and uh, welcome to day two, the beginning of a plan. What is the plan? Um, yeah, I, I just like to hear it from Washington, quite honestly. It's all the changes that need to happen to keep America from going broke. And these are tough changes, but they have to be made. Oh, come on, please. The Dow hit 11,000 this week. President said we're, we're turning the corner. Didn't you see all this good news? Uh huh. Yeah. I also. <laughs> Uh, this is amazing propaganda. I've never seen anything like this from the people who told us we're all socialists now. And then when I started saying it, they said, no, 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 socialist. How dare you? What kind of racist are you for saying he's a socialist? Yeah, now they're on this one. America is back. And in this magazine, it's fantastic because you can also uh, read all about hate. And look, Harry, can you get this right here, right here? Right here? Look at uh, this one right here. Oh, well, look at it. It's Fox News that they use as the example of hate. And, like, who didn't see this coming? If you watched this show about a month ago, here's Father Coughlin up here. Uh-oh, look who they're saying is just like Father Coughlin. Oh, my goodness. Is this a wholly owned subsidiary of the Obama Corporation? Look, the storm is still coming on shore. We're in the eye of a hurricane. There is another wall of this storm, and it is going to hit us harder than the first wave. It's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt worse because we're being told that everything is okay when it clearly isn't. Now, I want you to listen very carefully because everybody's going to take, well, they already do. They take everything I say and take it out of context. Short term, everything is going to feel okay. We're probably going to go through the summer and election cycle, and everything's going to be fine because the stimulus and everything else that they're pumping into the system, it's like adrenaline. Do you know that two thirds of the stimulus that we had to pass by Friday, or we're all gonna die, two thirds of that money is still left. I wonder when they're gonna start spending that. Do you think maybe this summer? It's a trick used by Roosevelt during the New Deal. Things are gonna look good, and they're look, well, they probably won't look good, but they'll, <laughs> America's back. Barring an emergency, most people will think that we're okay and we're on the road to recovery. Believe me, long term, things are not good. Do you know why I was for TARP for three days? For three days. They said that we needed this thing on a Monday, and by Wednesday I said, don't do it, it's a trick. I was for it for three days because I thought our government, this is when I still believed a little bit in our government, I thought they would use that time to tell you the truth on how bad things really were so you could prepare yourself and your family. Well, it took me three days to see the lie from the last administration. And the lie was, we're fine, this is going to fix it, relax. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep with someone else's wife to fix their marriage. What? Believe me, the uber wealthy, the elite, and the politicians are battening down the hatches. And they are preparing for the transformation. I mean... If we're so good, why are we transforming into something else? I want you to look at the numbers. The deficit in the last 18 months, we have had a deficit for the last 18 months, okay? Last month, our government spent $218 billion, but we took in only $153 billion. That's $65 billion short. Where do we get that money? Oh, of course we're good for it, right? I mean, of course, we just take out a loan and cover out 
will cover the $65 billion from last month. How are we going to pay it back? Because it's not $65 billion. Let me show you the deficit clock here. If you look at the deficit clock, here's the U.S. national debt of $12 trillion. Here's unfunded liabilities, $108 trillion in unfunded liabilities. So when somebody comes to you and says, America's back, Newsweek says everything's okay, remember, these were the same people that said before the housing crisis that we were also fine. Example? We expect moderate growth going forward. We believe that if the housing uh, sector begins to stabilize um, and if some of the inventory corrections that are still going on in manufacturing uh, begin to be completed, Mm -hmm. that there's a reasonable possibility that we'll see some strengthening of the economy sometime during the middle of the year. Oh, yeah, sure. Now, if you want to live in that world, that's fine. God bless you. I wish I could. I really do. I think you're living in denial, but maybe you're right. And if that's the world you're living in, change the channel, man. Why are you wasting your time with me? If you're not living in that world, you think that guy might be wrong. He was wrong then, and he might be wrong now. We need to start looking at how much money that we're spending. This is out of control. So let's start today with Medicare and Social Security. The government said that Social Security would be okay, okay until the year 2037. For Medicare, it was 2017 until the real trouble started. Wow. Is this a surprise to anyone? Let me take you into the time tunnel and show you where we started looking and we knew we could find some president mentioning it. Watch this. Social Security, as some of us had warned for so long, faced disaster. I myself have been talking about this problem for almost 30 years. As 1983 began, the system stood on the brink of bankruptcy. A double victim of our economic ills. To every American out there on Social Security, to every, every American supporting that system today and to everyone counting on it when they retire, we made a promise to you and we are going to keep it. Today, Social Security is strong, mm -hmm. but by 2013, 2013, payroll taxes will no longer be sufficient to cover monthly payments. Oh. By 2032, the trust fund will be exhausted and Social Security will be unable to pay the full benefits older Americans have been promised. Retirement Security also depends upon keeping the commitments of Social Security, and we will. We must make Social Security financially stable and allow personal retirement accounts for younger workers who choose them. It's not working out. 2037, 2017, 2013. Check your calendar. I don't think it's any of those dates yet. Yet this year, Social Security is now in the red. We've known it. Ronald Reagan said in 1983, I've been talking about it for 30 years. America, we have a moral responsibility. We, we, this, this country is unlike any other country on planet Earth. If you believe that the founders were divinely inspired then you've got to believe the rest of it that this is a special land. And we're trustees. This, this isn't something that we own. These rights we don't even own. They were given to us by God. He, he, he wants them for somebody else. We're supposed to pass them on. This is a long-standing tradition in America. John Winthrop, the Puritan, the settler's first governor, he actually, he's the guy who's first said about the shining city on the hill. He gave that in 1630. To help prepare his people for starting here, he talked to them about how special this land was. He talked to them about, we are going to be eternally responsible. He said, we'll be fine if this happens. <laughs> the spelling was weird. To do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God, for this end, we must be knit together in this work as one man. We must entertain each other in brotherly affection. We must delight in each other, make others' conditions our own, rejoice together, mourn together, labor and suffer together. But if our hearts shall turn away, so we shall not obey, but we shall be seduced into worshiping other gods, 
our pleasures, our profits, and serve them. It is propounded unto us this day that we shall surely perish out of the good land, whether we pass over this vast sea to possess it. Therefore, let us please choose life, cleave unto him, for he is our life and our prosperity.